OK, uh, so let's see how we can um, um, collect data from websites. So first, we have to make the request to those websites. Uh, so if you still remember that we, we kind of did similar exercise in the Python class, so let's do it again. So basically, in Python, there's a default Python library called URL library that has a request function, can make some simple HTTP request to visit a web page and also to retain the HTML content. OK, and the request also has a open URL open function that can open a network object that is defined by the URL that you define. So to make the request, we have to tell that the URL URL of that HTML website page and this URL open function will open that network object and the read function will load the return contents into Python part and finally so we can print those objects that in Python directly uh, so however so some might be some special characters so we can use the decode function which is a, a built-in function in string that can decode the strings um, based on the specific format. So let's look at an example here. So uh, here we define a URL that is a URL that from our previous labs, remember that we created a website that is hosted on this website. And by default, it will retain the index.html. So we use this URL variable to see, okay, so where the website is located and uh, specifically that will return that um, index.html. And next, we just import the Python module. So we can import the request module directly. So from the URL ID. And once we import it, and we can use that open URL open function to return that URL to this response object. So that will be an URL network object. And this response has a read function, so that will load the content into Python. So we pass a function into this uh, HTML underscore data variable, so that contains the content of the HTML code and we can print that code directly in python so here you can see we have the source code okay so if you remember that those are the code we wrote in the previous library and we use decode uh, specifically we're using utf-8 uh, format so that we can print the the source code in a nice way okay uh so let's try that one in our notebook so first uh, just remember remind you that uh, this is a website web, web page we created from previous lab uh, so I can get my URL here so if you are wondering where the URL is so you can go back to the S3 um, your S3 bucket so you go to your AWS service and you tap S3 and you can open that one into a new tab um, you can see the bucket that we created and if you go to the properties and if you check the static website hosting and so this is where you can find out the url okay so i'm going to copy this url uh, i'm going to pass that one to this url variable so that equals okay so this url and next i'm going to import the request uh, Python library so import URLIB dot request and response equals URLIB dot request dot URL open where I pass the URL to this uh, URL open function and next I can pass that returned object uh, load object into the Python so I call it HTML data equals response dot read and we can print 
the HTML data directly. So now let's write uh, URLLIB. Okay. Okay, uh, so now you can see that right now it is in a binary format. So if you want to see that one in a nice way, so we have to decode. So string dot decode, and here we're going to tell that we're using UTF-8 format. D C O D E. Okay. Okay, uh, so now you can see this HTML code. So that is the one that we wrote in the previous lab. Okay, so hopefully you still remember that one. So we have root HTML tag. Uh, we have the head section that contains the mental data and also style settings. We have a body tag, which has two DRV tag. Uh, so the first DRV tag and also the second DRV tag. Okay. So now we have loaded HTML in Python. So how can we get the specific informa information that we want? So how can we parse the HTML code? Because you can see the HTML code is a little bit messy, especially if you are going to analyze um, a website that is a more complicated than our website, like Indeed or the other website that you mentioned. Uh, as your major data resources. So those HTML code normally are very, very complicated. So that we need additional tool to do that. So the tool that normally used is called Beautiful Soup. Okay, I don't know why it's, it, it called this a very interesting name, but the Beautiful Soup is a Python library that can help us to parse the HTML code. So if you don't have the Beautiful Soup, Python library installed, you have to pip install first. And also remember that in notebook, you have to tap the escalation mark so that to install the beautiful soup if you don't have that Python library. If you have, and then you can skip this part. And next, you're going to an analyze your target web pages. So um, is a Chrome or Firefox has a built-in function tool that called inspector tool that can allow us to understand the HTML code easily. Okay, so you can identify the specific section of the HTML code that you need. And next, you can use beautiful soup to parse HTML code. And once you get to the specific information, you can extract that one and also you can load that one into your, uh, into your database. Okay, so let's say that here we have installed the, the beautiful soup for and we see from BS4, we import the beautiful soup. And we use beautiful soup where we pass the HTML data that we just loaded from the previous step. And we also need to define the parser, which is HTML. And we can print the soup. Okay. And you can see that the soup, the, the result is similar as what we did earlier. However, this soup object has several functions that can allow us easily identify um, the elements or the tags that we are interested. Okay, so let's see the example in our notebook. So let's see first, let's see whether we have installed beautiful soups. So let's see escalation part pip install beautiful soup four. And let's run it. And we can see that it has already been installed, so which is nice. So uh, actually, we don't need to in, uh, install it um, again. So here, let's see from BS4 import beautiful soup. Okay, remember that B and S are up cases. And we see the soup equals, so as a convention, we call it soup. So that is. We use beautiful soup. And here we're going to load the HTML data that we uh, just loaded. So this HTML data, copy and paste. 
And we also need to tell the beautiful soup that we are going to we are using HTML parser. Okay. And now we have a soup object. So let's say print soup. Okay, so now you can see uh, we have the HTML code being uh, the soup being printed. Uh, you can see there's no difference between the previous one. So here it is in a string format, but here this is a soup object. So later on, we will see that the soup object has a lot of powerful functions that allow us to uh, identify or specify and also dis distinguish those tags and also allow us to easily locate the information that we want.